Good morning, Lifeline. I just want to touch bases with you and briefly on, on forgiveness and then give you three keys of forgiveness. First, I would like to open with a scripture. It says in Ephesians 4 and 32, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as, just as in Christ God has forgiven you. Um, I just feel like in forgiveness, we just have to understand when another person hurts us in our life, it turns upside down and gives a worldly response. It's to cancel them, a.k.a. cancel culture a.k.a. cancel culture, but as pastor says, everyone is greater than their last worst act. Uh, forgiveness, definition of forgiveness. Forgiveness is a strong medicine, a strong medicine. Uh, when life hits us hard, there's nothing as effective as forgiveness for healing deep wounds. Many people have misconceptions about forgiveness really means, this is what forgiveness truly means, extending mercy to those who have done you wrong, hurt you, or led you in the wrong way. Um, let me give you three keys. Know what forgiveness is and why it matters. Extending grace, at some point you will need grace because at the end of the day, forgiveness is for you and not for the other person. It's a process. It does not happen overnight, but it will happen. It will not happen overnight, but it sure will happen. Take your time. Become forgivingly fit. Just like we work on becoming physically fit, you have to become forgivingly fit. Pride stops us from forgiving. You can be prideful, you can be, you can be prideful, but anything, that's what stops you from forgiving because you're focus on too much pride. And Christ forgave us all for our mess. How dare we not forgive each other for what they've done to us? Finally, develop a forgiving heart. Learn to forgive others, whether they did you wrong, or whether they're not talking to you, or whether what they did to you, it does not matter. Just forgive them, because it's for you and not for the other person. I leave you with this scripture, Luke 6 and 37. And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them, so that your Father in heaven may forgive you for, for, for your sins. My, my title is Weights That Are Heavy But Never Too Heavy For God. Nah, 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 nah. Let me ask y'all, what weights are heavy? Name some weights that are heavy, come on. Debt, all right. Fear. Violence, all right. Grief, all right. That's it, all right. All right. So, the last first day of school of my senior year. All right, we ain't get to this part yet, but I couldn't even take a good picture. Y'all see that? All right, so last first day of senior year. I was driving out of nowhere. Boom! A car struck the back end of my passenger side of my vehicle. Man, the whole car turned, I blacked out in the middle of the street. I tell you, this was the scariest moment of my life. Yeah. Like, you don't even understand. I had to go to the hospital for all kinds of tests. While in the hospital, my head was everywhere. Like, who gonna pay for bills? I got, I got the money. I ain't got that much money for the CAT scan, MRI, <laughs> X-ray. I ain't got all that money now. The insurance, you know, insurance don't cover everything. So yeah, you know. And then, and then, like, how I'm gonna get to school? Like, they acting crazy on the L, so <laughs> how, how I'm gonna get to school? So, I was in the hospital, really going through it, had head on and off headaches. This day had a whole weight on my shoulders. You don't even understand. Fast forward, the insurance claim called me. The, the insurance claim called me. Man, I was happy. Not even knowing that they put me at the part of the accident. I'm like, <sighs> at that moment, I balled up and started crying tears, real tears. Now, black men, don't be scared. To, don't be scared to cry. Don't be scared to cry. Let them tears out. Black men, let them tears out. Go, go in the corner or something, but you gotta let them tears out, cause I did. My car was wrecked. The, the uh, insurance blamed me at fault for the accident. I was able to drive due to damages. The airbags deployed. You can show the picture of her car now. Show the picture of her car. Now, I'm going to show you. Look at her car. She ain't got no damages on my car, on her car. She ain't got no damage. Now, you go to the, the airbags deployed and everything. Um, the, the wheel caved in. I didn't send them that picture, but the wheel caved in. Now, imagine. you. This is the first day of school. The first day of school. She can at least hit me on the fourth day. I would have been cool. 
I want to be cool. Uh, still, she hit me, but I don't want to be cool, you know. On the fourth day of school, we don't do nothing but sign syllabus, and you take them home, and your mama sign them and bring them back. But you, yeah, you got all that. And life, situations and circumstances are going to hit you out of nowhere. Like Hurricane Ian. Hurricane Ian. It's going to hit you. Now, you will have family issues, school issues, financial problems, so many issues that become burdens and weights that seem too heavy to carry. To overcome these burdens, I had to pray. I had to get in my word. I, I, I had to let um, the outside and everything not phase me because if I knew I want to stay in that mindset, the enemy would have been got me. He wouldn't have got me. Now, lean in. This is this something. This something I came with. You can't dwell on hardships and burdens because they'll take a toll on you. They'll, they'll take a toll on you now. They'll take a toll on you. Let's talk about burdens. Let's talk about burdens. Listen, as a skinny young man, some weights are heavy and out of my range, out of, out of, out of my range of lifting. Out of my range of lifting. Okay? To overcome these without a personal trainer and a right guidance to show me my lifting capacity, I could seriously injure myself. Hurt myself, injure myself, I could be laid up in a hospital right now. So in lifting, you have to know your limits, just like burdens. Right now, right now, you have to know your limit, just like burdens. You have to know what you have to know what you can take. You have to know what you can take because in Psalms 81, 6 and 7, God says, "I remove the burdens from your shoulders; your hands will set free from the basket." God is telling you He is going to remove. He will, he's going to remove you and set you free. Not to throw no shade or nothing. Not to throw no shade or nothing. Some of y'all like to carry everybody weight and think you big and bad. But let, let me know out the service how that's been working for you. Hey, this is my closing remarks and closing. I just want to leave you with this. First Peter 5 and 7 says, Casting all cares upon him. He cares for you. Who, who got a Bible? Who got a Bible? Who got a Bible? Who, who got a Bible? Let me, let me, this, this your Bible right here? That's a planner. No, I just use this as a Bible now. All right. Y'all see this, right? The man is giving y'all the sauce. The man is giving y'all the sauce. All you have to do is apply the sauce to your life. All you have to do is apply the sauce to your life. Financial, set free. Debt, set free. Everything, set free. This is the sauce. All y'all need is the sauce. So, um, I just wanted to say something about God's forgiving grace. And in the Bible it says that God's grace is sufficient. Sometimes we want what we want, and we don't want to listen to our parents because we want to be like what we see in the world. We don't want to talk, we want to talk and act like what we see on TV. Sometimes we are the prodigal sons and daughters. In the book of Luke, chapter 15, verse 11 through 24, it's, we see the story of the prodigal son. The Bible tells us about the story, about a story, about a son who did not want to listen to his father and wants to go out and experience life on his own. The Bible says there was a man that had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So the father divided his property between them. Not long after that, the son, I mean the, the youngest son got all his things that he had and set off for a distant country. And there he squandered his wealth and wild living. After he spent, after he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that country, and he began to be in need. How many of you found yourself in need after you did do what God told you to do? Found, you, found yourself in need of God's help to get you out of a situation that you created? The Bible says the son went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to work 
on the fields and feed the pigs. The Bible says he longed to fill his stomachs with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. So when he came to his senses, he said, how many of my heart... How many of my father's hired servants have food to spare, and I am here starving to death? I will, I will set out and go back to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven, and I have sinned against you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion with, for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven I, and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a f ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast to celebrate. The father wanted to celebrate because his son had came back to the fold and he was al he already forgave his son, forgave his son. He was patient and loving just as God is patient and forgives us. When we don't want to listen and do and want to do things our way, God gives us free will and most often we will mess up because we're not under the covenant of God or our parents. But when God is always, but God is always there to welcome us back. You are, he'll forgive you. You are worthy of God's forgiving grace. I want to share this with you guys, um, what God has put in my heart, which is don't take God's grace for granted. <laughs> I know some of y'all probably wondering, why did she pick this topic? But let me tell you why. Sometimes I will take the grace of God for granted even without knowing I was. I know sometimes I used to get too comfortable and I used to think that, oh, I did something bad, but God got me. But God got me. For example, my parents used to say, for example, my parents used to ask me if I had money and I would say no, like, I'm trying to get y'all money. Like, you ain't saying nothing. <laughs> um, they would ask me how I had extra money, and I would say no. But I realized that it was bad for me to say that, that I shouldn't have did that to my parents. And then I would think to myself, girl, God don't get you. <laughs> like... <laughs> Right after that, I would think, he knows my heart. Like, God knows me. <laughs> Not only was I taking God's grace for granted, I was taking my parents too. I should have been grateful to have my own money and not be greedy and selfish because God blessed me with a job. And now I have my own money. Like, do y'all see my point? Like, okay, okay, okay. Let me pause right there and go to Romans verse 6, 14 through 18, NLT. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Sin is no longer your master, for you no longer live under the requirements of the law. Instead, you live under the freedom of God's grace. Well then, since God's grace has set up has set us free from the law, does that mean we can go on sinning? Of course not. Do you realize that you become the slave of whatever, of whatever you choose to obey? You could be a slave to sin, which leads you to death, or you can choose to obey God, which leads you to righteousness. <laughs> Thank God. Once you were slaves of sin, but now you're with now, well, now you're wholehearted, obey these teachings we have given you. Now you are free from slavery to sin, and you become the slaves of righteousness living. I love that word. <laughs> in his word, God instructs his people to live in such a way that we deeply impact the lives of others. Don't y'all want to impact the world with goodness? Because I know I do. Do y'all? Okay, okay. 
<laughs> but I know sometimes we are in a good place with God, and we, rec- and we have received the gift of grace from God, but we tend to forget what the, what the gift of grace was before. Before I go on, let me give y'all the definitions of grace, if y'all don't know. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yes, classes in session. Y'all here? Y'all, y'all okay? <laughs> okay. The free and unmerited favor of God as manifested, as manifested in the salvation of sinners and the contribute of blessings. And another definition is a divine given talent and blessing. So yeah, yeah. If y'all didn't know that, I had to tell y'all. You know, let y'all know. <laughs> okay, so... I'm just going to say this real quick because I'm running out of time. Hurry up. <laughs> now, those, now, those were just a few definitions. Now, let me give y'all your favorite scripture that everyone always remember and quote. 2 Corinthians, verse 12 and 9. ESV. Hmm. Y'all always quote, <laughs> my grace is sufficient for you. But y'all never say the whole scripture. Y'all need to say everything. Everything. Okay? Everything. Okay? I'm going to say it for y'all that don't know the whole thing. My grace is sufficient for you. My, for my power is made perfectly in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of the weakness. So that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Yes, yes. I love that. Let me do. <laughs> okay, so I want y'all to close your eyes. Everybody, close your eyes. I see you over there. Close them, close them. Okay, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, now I really want you to think about all the ways God has showed you his power. I just want you to think about it. Think about it. All the ways he has blessed you. All the way, all the things he did that no one else could have done. All the love, joy, and peace that he has given you. Mm. Ain't he a good God? Mm. Yeah. Now that's some of God's grace, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, I want y'all to open your eyes. Open, open them. Look at me. Hear me, okay? But you also must remember that the grace is not taken for granted, nor you should play with it. We could be in such a depart place if it was not for grace. I just want to say, I just thank God for grace. And don't, and don't take God's grace for granted. Remember what I said today. Don't take God's grace for granted.